What's up guys? In this video, we're going to work on how to solve a system of equations when we have one infinite or no solutions. And we're going to do that by working through five different examples that I hand selected to help you along with the process. I hope you enjoy. So if I was going to solve this by substitution, what I want to make sure I do is I need to have a variable solved by itself. So I need to get x equals or y equals. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the value of one of those variables into the other equation. So I need to solve for x or y. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I look at these first two, solving for x and y in the top equation, it's going to be about the same. However, what I'm going to notice is to solve for x, I have to subtract the 5y, and then I have to divide by 2. Therefore, I'm going to be left with a fraction because I'm going to have a negative 5 divided by 2. It's going to get a little messy. Um, to solve for y, I have to subtract the 2x and then divide by 5. Again, that's each way it's going to be two steps. And I'm going to be left with fractions, which is still going to work. I probably just don't want to do all the math right now. However, if I look at this equation, it's really easy for me to solve for x. All I have to do is add the 3y to the other side, since 1 is my coefficient for x. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's just add the 3y to the other side. Therefore, I'm left with x is going to equal a negative 3 plus 3y. All right? Let's have a seat over here. So therefore, I have x equals negative 3 plus 3y. Right? Um, what I'm going to do is, is this value, I can now say that x equals negative 3 plus 3y. So rather than writing x up there, I can write in the value of what x is from my second equation, which is x equals negative 3, or which is negative 3 plus 3y. So I'm going to write 2 times, instead of x, I'll write what the value of my x is from the other equation. Does everybody see what I did? I solved for a variable on one equation, and I substituted that into the other equation. Now, I have to use distributive property. Could you tell them to hold on, please? Oh, just hold on for a second. Therefore, then I distribute. I have negative 6 plus 6y plus 10y equals 38. Combine my like terms, I have negative 6 plus 16y equals 38. Um, now I add 6 to both sides. And I get 16y equals 44. Where did you get the, you get the 10? Yeah, I where did you get the 10y? I don't know. I think I kind of made that up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what I did was I think I just did that in it's There you go. It's 5. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like to make things up. Let's go and look at this. Let's add them up. Because obviously that didn't work out to decimal. Um, this is going to give us, was that 44? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 44. Okay. So when I add my 6 to the other side, I get 11y equals 44. Right? Thank you. Divide by 11. Y is going to equal 4. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Now I know what my value of y is. I can plug that back into my equation to find the value of x. And it's important, you can plug your y into either one of these, but once you plug y into one of these equations, you then have to solve for x again, Rosalind. So the best thing to do is to take that value of y and plug it back into the equation when it's already solved for x. So now I can say x equals a negative 3 plus 3 times my value of y, which is 4. So therefore, x equals 9. So to remember, a substitution is telling us where our two systems intersect, what point they share. And since they share exactly one point, I can write it as a coordinate point, which is 9 comma 4. All right? That's it. So on doing this problem, when I'm going to be dealing with substitution, I want to solve this by substitution. All right? So when I want to solve this problem by substitution, what I'm going to do is, remember, I'm going to have to isolate a variable, right? I need to know what one of my variables equals. I either need to know x equals something or y equals something. Now, previously, when we've done substitution problems, um, it was very easy because we said x equals this or y equals that, right? But if we look at this problem, do we have x equals or y equals anywhere? Does anybody say it? No. So what we need to do for this problem is we need to manipulate one of the equations or change one of them so that one of them equals or x equals something or y equals something. So our next big choice is we need to decide what do we solve for? Do we solve for x or do we solve for y? 
Well, that's really going to depend on what we're given. <clears throat> and let's kind of forget about the top equation right now. I always like to cover that up. <clears throat> if I just looked at 3x minus 5y equals negative 1, and I said, what do you think would be easier, to solve for the x or to solve for the y? Um, y. You guys might, some of you might say x, maybe some of you might say y. And I'm here to tell you, and some of you might say I can't see it at all. But what I'm here to tell you is they're roughly going to be about the same, you know, give or take, depending on how you order your numbers. But if you guys notice, to solve for x, I need to subtract 15y, and then I need to divide by 3, which is two steps, right? To solve for 15, I need to subtract 3x to the other side and divide by 15, which again is two steps. So really, solving for x or y on the bottom equation is really kind of about the same for both sides. However, if we look at the top equation, what do you think is going to be easier, the x or the y? And if you guys look at it, if the y, you have to get rid of the x and then you have to divide by 5. But the x is already by itself. So, I mean, as far as not being multiplied or divided by a number. So therefore, all you simply need to do is so put the 5y to the other side and you just solve for x. Does that make sense? So Why when you guys are you doing, when you're doing substitution, it's helpful to look for the variable that's by itself, meaning it's being multiplied by a number, only being multiplied by number one. You don't need to divide. That's what I'm saying. That's why you want to solve for x. If you had to solve for y, you'd have to divide by five, right? Because you need to undo your multiplication of five. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So if I want to do this problem, if I want to solve for x, x, e I'm sorry, x plus 5y equals 4. To solve for x, I subtract 5y. So therefore, I have x equals negative 5y plus 4. Or whatever, it doesn't matter, 4 minus 5y, however you want to write it. So now, What you guys have is you have x equals negative 5y plus 4, okay? So therefore, my, my value of my x equals negative 5y plus 4. I can plug that in, or what we like to call substitute that in for the x of my other equation. So now I have 3 times negative 5y plus 4. plus 15y equals negative 1. So I see what I did? Okay. Then, whenever we have a number that's multiplied by your parentheses, that's why when you substitute in, guys, put them in parentheses. Because it's going to help when you have a multiplication problem, you'll remember to do distributive property. 3 times negative 15 is a negative 15y. 3 times 4 is a positive 12. Plus 15y equals negative 1. Now we can combine our like terms. So I have negative 15y plus 15y. That's going to equal 0y plus 12 equals negative 1. I don't have any y there. So my final answer I get is 12 equals negative 1. I have nothing to solve for, right? I can't find the x or I can't find the y. So if we were to think about this with graphing, remember guys, the system, the solution is where the two lines intersect, right? There's an x coordinate and a y coordinate, correct? Right? Well, if you guys look at here, do we can we solve for x or solve for y? No. Our y's and our x's canceled out, right? It got multiplied by 0. Yeah. So guess what? These two, these two lines don't have an intersection point. So this is what we call no solution. And also, you can tell that because 12 does not equal negative 1, does it? That is false. So therefore... This is no solution. And what two lines don't intersect? Does anybody remember those two lines that don't intersect? Parallel. Parallel, Parallel lines. Very good. Yes? So you do all that work to find out that they just don't cross? <laughs> no solution. Yep. We did all that just to figure it out. There is a, there is a you know another way that we can work on it, but I'll, I'll go, I'll leave that for a little bit later in detection. But um, yeah, so you just want to follow the process. The main important thing, Rosalyn, that I wanted you to understand is to solve for x so you can do substitution like you guys did in 1 through 10. Yeah, okay. okay? All right. So that's about it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve the systems of equations using elimination. 
So to do that, what I need to do is um, identify which variable I want to isolate, right? Which variable I want to want to solve for that I can plug into the other equation. So to do that, I want to choose the variable that is isolated, right? That is by itself. Um, not really by itself. And you can notice that both these equations, I do not have a variable that is isolated. So that's going to be an issue. Um, the next thing is you want to say, all right, well, if there's not a variable that's isolated, look for the variable that has a coefficient of 1. Where you can see I have y and y. This is negative 1, that's positive 1, right? Well, preferably, we'd like to use the one that's positive. You could use this one, but since we have a, the variable with the positive one, let's go ahead and use that. So what I'm going to want to do is solve for y in this equation. So I have y, um, sorry, y minus 7x equals negative 6. So I want to isolate this variable. I want to get the variable on by itself. So to do that, I have to undo subtraction, which would be adding 7x to both sides. So I have y equals 7x minus 6. OK, so now I'm going to take the value of 7, take the value of 7, and plug it into, uh, take the value of, sorry, the value of 7. Take the value of y, which is 7x minus 6, and plug it in for y in the other equation. So therefore, I have 7x minus, rather than y, y is equal to 7x minus 6. So I can, these are interchangeable, right? So that's 7x minus 6 equals 6. You could also write y, but again, we want to write an equation which only has x's so we can solve. Well, I need to make sure I apply distributive property. So I have 7x minus 7x plus 6 equals 6. Well, that goes to 0. And I'm left with 6 equals 6, which is always going to be true. So therefore, we have a consistent solution that is dependent. This is infinite many solutions. If you looked at the graph, these would be, graph, um, these would be lines that are right on top of each other. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a system of equations using substitution. Thanks. So what I want to do for this last problem, guys, is I want to solve. Remember, when we're doing substitution, we need to get a variable by itself. We looked at this, this second equation, and this is not a good way to solve for x or y because I'm going to have to use a two-step. I'm going to have to be dividing by 2. And you can do it, but a lot of times you're just making more work on yourself. You want to pick a variable that either has a positive 1 or negative 1 in front of it and solve for that variable. So I noticed that my x has a 1 in front. Therefore, I'm going to want to solve for that variable. So to do that, I'll just do that little side work over here. So I have x minus 5y equals 10. To quickly solve for x, all I have to do is add the 5y to the other side. OK? Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is now, remember, I need to substitute in the value of x, which is 10 plus 5y. I'm going to substitute that in for the other equation. So when I do that, I get 2. I don't want to write times x, but times. Ten plus five y minus ten y equals twenty. Okay. Now, since I have a number, and remember, guys, when you're doing substitution, Justin, you're in this now. Okay. When you're doing substitution, you've got to make sure you put parentheses around your number that you substitute in. The reason why is because, ladies and gentlemen, when there's multiplication, remember when we have a number multiplied by parentheses, we have to use distributive property. So it's really important that when you guys showing me that you're doing substitution, that you put it around parentheses. So therefore, I'm going to get 20 plus 10y minus 10y equals 20. All right. Now I'm going to do this kind of two different ways. Okay. I'm going to leave it like this. Um, and one way I'm going to do is you could also. Let's show you guys this way. Let me rewrite the problem. OK. Um, ladies and gentlemen, over here, if you guys notice, these two cancel out, right? You don't have to look 20 equals 20. Is that true or false? True. True, right? That's important to know. Also to know is let me just manipulate this a little bit. Let me add the 10y over to this side. And then let me subtract the 20 on both sides. Therefore, what you guys get is 10y equals 10y. Divide by 10 on both sides. And I get y equals y. Okay. Now, what I did, guys, is I just kind of solved this two different ways. But I want you guys to look at this and try to think about this. Remember, we're trying to find the solution of the system, right, where we have two lines intersect. 
okay? Now remember, when we're doing this, we need to find an x value and we need to find a y value. So let's try to think about this y value. For one thing, do we have our y, do we, can we get a y by itself? No, we can't get y equals three or y equals four, right? Whenever y equals a number, it's gonna be equal five equals five, 10 equals 10, right? Y is always going to be true for any number, right? Say y equals 10. Is it gonna make this inequality true, right? What about y equals negative five? Negative five equals negative five. Y equals 10, y 10 equals 10. Y equals 30, 30 equals 30. So this is always going to be true, right? So what that means is, on the intersection, your y coordinates are always equal to, or your y coordinates are always equal to each other. Do you guys remember what type of solution we had when we when we had all of the coordinates were the same or they shared? Do you remember? No Not the no solution. Remember the no solution? They don't intersect at all. The infinite many solutions. So that's what exactly what this is. What this is is two lines actually right on top of each other where all their points are shared. Their y coordinates are always equal to each other. So this is what we call an infinite many solutions. <laughs> so, so it's infinite many solutions. You're not going to get a selector. Okay? If you guys look at this equation, this one's a little bit different. So there's something special about that last one because we had a variable that had a coefficient of 1, right? And we liked that, Brianna, because it had a coefficient of 1, it was easy to solve for that variable. However, in, when you have a case like this, we don't have a variable that has a coefficient of 1. If you still like substitution, you can still apply substitution, Jordan, but it becomes a little bit more difficult. That's why we like to look at using elimination, which we looked at. So when applying elimination, basically what we're doing, rather than solving for one variable and plugging what that um, expression is into the other equation, basically what we're doing is we're adding it or subtracting the two equations. So to add or subtract, it only makes sense to add or subtract the equations is when you have the, variable, the equations with um, coefficients that are exactly the same. So I look at, make sure my variables are aligned, which they are. Then I look at the coefficients of the variables to see if they're the same. Well, the coefficients of x's aren't the same, nor are the coefficients of the y the same. All right? So I need to say, all right, well, which one doesn't matter which one is going to have the smaller coefficient or the least common multiple? Well, six, forget about the negatives. Three and six have a least common multiple of six, and two and four have a least common multiple of four. So any, either way, to get them to be the same, all I need to do is multiply my top equation by two. So I'm going to do that. So I multiply the top equation by 2. And when I do that, I obtain 6x minus 4y equals 10. And then my bottom equation is going to remain the same, negative 6x plus 4y equals 7. Now, usually, when we're doing elimination, we're only eliminating one variable at a time. But as you guys notice, when I multiply this, now, both of my variables have coefficients that are exactly the same. Do you guys see that? And since the coefficient is one's positive, one's negative, should I add the equations or subtract the equations to eliminate, to get to 0? I should just add them. Well, see, that you, you can multiply by, like if these were both positive, I would say multiply this by negative 2, because then that would be negative 6, positive 6. But you already have a negative 6, so make one positive, one negative, and that's fine. Now, let's go ahead and add them. 6x plus negative 6x is 0x. Negative 4y plus positive 4y is 0y equals 17. 0x plus 0y is 0 equals 17. So I look at that, and I determine, all right, this system of equations is, it has a false statement. It doesn't tell me what x is equal to or what y is equal to. It gives me a false statement. Since they give me a false statement, Quijan, this is um, a no solution. There is never going to be an intersection that is going to be true for either of these equations 